Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to see three different ways to obtain the input impedance of a DC-DC converter by simulation. So in this video we will see first an introduction, then we will review the theoretical calculation of the input impedance of a DC-DC converter and then we will see the three possibilities to obtain the input impedance of the DC-DC converter by simulation. The first one is by simulating the actual circuit. Second one is by simulating the average circuit. And finally, the simulation of the small signal circuit. There are two previous videos that are important before watching this video, especially if you are not familiar with the modeling of DC-DC converters and with the simulation of DC-DC converters. So in this case, please take a look at these videos, Power Electronics number 3, Ultra-Fast Modeling of DC-DC Converters in Continuous Conduction Mode, and LTS Spice number 6, Open Loop Frequency Response of a DC-DC Converter. So starting with the introduction, why is it important to know the input impedance of a DC-DC converter? And the reason is that usually DC-DC converters don't operate in stand-alone mode. They usually have an EMI filter, for example, at the input, or we can have two DC-DC converters operating in cascade. So we can have some interaction between both blocks. We can analyze this interaction in a small signal, so we can obtain an equivalent circuit as shown here. The first block is going to behave like a voltage source with an output impedance, and the DC-DC converter can be modeled by using the input impedance of the DC-DC converter in a small signal. So we can analyze this circuit and obtain the voltage here at the interface between both blocks. So we can obtain this expression here that can be seen as a transfer function of the output voltage Vx over Vo with this expression here. So in this expression, we know that if we have roots here that have a positive real part, then we are going to have an unstable behavior in the interaction of both blocks. So we can analyze this transfer function here by using the well-known techniques based on the body plot or on the Nyquist plot to determine if we are going to have any instability issue in the interaction of both blocks. This is especially important in closed loop operation of the DC-DC converter. Now let's do a quick review about how to model DC-DC converters. We have seen this in this video, Power Electronics number 3. We can start from our back converter, which is designed to operate in continuous conduction mode, for example. And in this mode of operation, we can obtain what we call the average circuit in continuous conduction mode by substituting the switch by this current source, which depends on the duty cycle and on the average current through the inductor. And also we substitute the diode by this voltage source, which depends on the duty cycle and on the input voltage VI. And by linearizing this circuit and taking the Laplace transform of the different magnitudes, then we can obtain the small signal circuit in continuous conduction mode that we have also seen in this previous video, so we obtain this circuit here. Now, from the small signal circuit, if we want to obtain the input impedance of our converter, 
we make zero the perturbations on the duty cycle and therefore we obtain this equivalent circuit here and this circuit is very easy to analyze we can obtain the input impedance by calculating the input current and then by dividing the input voltage over the input current we can obtain this expression here corresponding to the input impedance of our converter two extreme points are at DC operation for zero frequency we get this value of the input impedance and if we go to very high frequencies of operation infinite frequency then the input impedance tends to infinite so with this we have now all the information we are going to do an example for this converter here with input voltage equal to 10 volts output voltage 5 volts 10 micro henrys for the input impedance with 50 milliohms series resistance 33 microfarads for the filter capacitor with 0 0.1 ohms in series and here we have implemented the equation corresponding to the input impedance and here we are obtaining the uh, body plot of the input impedance and uh, in this part here we are printing several points to check in the simulations so here we have the results, we have the magnitude of the input impedance like this starting with a given value as we have seen and tending to infinite and this is the phase of the input impedance and here is the output corresponding to different points at different frequencies this is the magnitude and this is the phase we have used here as usual WinPython so if you are not familiar with this program you can take a look at these videos WinPython number one introduction and WinPython number three frequency analysis and body plots so now coming back to this slide we can see here the three possibilities to model the converter we can use the actual converter we can use the average circuit or we can use the small signal circuit so this is the reason why we have three possibilities to measure the input impedance by simulation we can simulate the actual converter with all the information we can simulate the average circuit which has only the information of the average magnitudes in the circuit or we can simulate the small signal circuit which has the information only of the perturbations on the different magnitudes so this is the first way to obtain the input impedance of the converter by simulation by using the actual circuit here we have the complete circuit including the switch the diodes all the elements the control circuit which uses a comparator here to generate the PWM waveform from the sawtooth waveform and from the reference voltage and then we use here a sinusoidal waveform superposed to the input voltage to introduce the perturbation on the input voltage this is going to generate also a perturbation on the input current that we measure here at this point so then with these statements here as we have seen in previous videos we can extract the perturbation on the input voltage that we have here at this point and also the perturbation on the input current that we have here at this point here which is proportional to the input current and then obtain the value of the corresponding input impedance we have seen this, all these statements in a previous video LTS PICE number 6 open loop frequency response of a DC DC converter so if you are not familiar with this process please watch this video
and also all these elements that are not in the LTSPICE distribution are from our Simulink compatible control library. So if you are not familiar with this library, also please take a look at this video. And this library is available from my website. So here is the circuit in LTS Pies. We are going to simulate from 100 Hz of the perturbation up to 200 kHz and getting 20 points per decade. So we can run the simulation and then we can see that we have to perform a total of 68 simulations. So it's going to take some time because also we are simulating the whole circuit, including uh, all that happens within the switching period. So this is going to take some time. So I will cut here and then we will come back when the results are ready. So now the simulation is finished. We can take a look at the log file by pressing Ctrl L and then we have here all the information uh, that we obtain in the simulation at the different frequencies. We know that we can plot this by right click on the mouse. Then we select this option here. We uh, combine the data in complex and then we go here and add traces and select gain. So we can see here the gain which corresponds to the input impedance now and here we have the magnitude so we can check that this is very similar to the theoretical value. And here in the discontinuous line, we have the phase of the input impedance. We can check uh, the points and we will see that they are very similar to the theoretical values. Of course, we can see here that when we are getting close to half of the switching frequency, we are going to have some distortion and then at this part here, we are not getting any regional value because we are very close to the switching frequency. The second way to obtain the input impedance of our converter is by using the average circuit. So here we have the average circuit implemented in LTS Pies. We have substituted the switch by the corresponding current source and the diode but the corresponding voltage source. We are injecting again here with a sinusoidal voltage source we are injecting the sinusoidal perturbation and we are measuring here at uh, this output here we are measuring the input current into the converter. So to keep this variable as B because this point here is used in this expression here then we have used this other voltage source which generates this same voltage but with this uh, new label out so we can obtain now the input impedance also by the ratio of the perturbations at this output here so it's the same as the perturbation at this point here of the input voltage divided by the perturbation at this point here which is the perturbation perturbation of the input current and then we can use exactly the same definitions and expressions that we have used in previous simulations. So here we have the circuit in LTS Pies. Now we can run the simulation and we can see that now the simulation is going to be much quicker because we are simulating only the evolution of the average values of the current and voltages in the circuit. So we can see that now is almost finishing and then we can take a look at the results. For example, we can represent if we like the uh, voltage at this point, which is the input voltage with the perturbation so we can see that we have only information on the perturbation but we don't have information related to the switching frequency 
So now to see the final plot, we press Ctrl L, then right click, and then here we can add a trace with the gain, and here we can see the gain of the input impedance, and in the discontinuous line here we see the value of the phase of the input impedance. Even we can see that we don't have noise when we approach the switching frequency, because in this simulation we are not considering the effect of the switching frequency. If we check the different points, we will see that they are very similar to the theoretical values that we have obtained from the WinPython script. And finally, the third way to obtain the input impedance of our converter from LTSPICE simulations is by using the small signal circuit. So here we have the small signal circuit implemented in LTSPICE. Here we have the different parameters, the parameters coming from the linearization. And then in this case, we are going to do a dot AC analysis and a small signal analysis on our converter. So in this case, we are injecting the perturbation using the AC parameter of the input voltage source. And we are measuring the current entering into our circuit using this current sensor here. So now in this circuit everything is perturbation, everything is a small signal, so we can obtain the input impedance by dividing this perturbation over this perturbation here. But we cannot do this directly because in LTSPICE we can only represent the voltages or currents in the different points, so we can obtain the input impedance by representing the reciprocal value of the voltage at this point here. So the input impedance will be obtained as this, one volt that we are injecting here over the voltage at this point which corresponds to the perturbation in the current. So here we have the small signal circuit implemented in LTSPICE. We can run the simulation and we can see that it's extremely fast to solve the circuit and then we can measure, for example, directly the voltage at this point, which is already related to the perturbation generated by this voltage source. So if we measure this voltage here, then we obtain not the input impedance of the converter, but the input admittance of the converter. So if we want to obtain the input impedance, we have to represent the reciprocal of this value, so it's 1 over VI in. So we press OK, and then here we have the input impedance of our converter, so we can measure the different values and we will see that they match very well with the other simulations and with the values of the theoretical analysis. Well, this concludes this presentation today. I hope that this information is useful for you in your future activities. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.